Uh, but I always thought Grimsby had the title of Great Grimsby, and, and, I, and I know a lot of people have said it isn't anymore. One of my argu- great arguments for living in Grimsby is it's a town with a foundation myth. So, I mean, to live in a town that, like Rome, has its foundation myth is quite impressive. Grimsby being a fishing town, uh, in its heyday, the biggest fishing town in the world. Um, yeah, and everybody was in that trade, and it was absolutely buzzing. He said that it would take you down midnight landing. Well, I was 19 at the time because I had to sort of leave the family because I was too old for the army to provide me with a. I had to earn my own living. So I came back here and lived with my grandparents. So I was about 19, and he said, Well, good down um, midnight landing. Well, I thought, my goodness me, I've got to get up. So I went to bed early, but I went fully clothed. So I thought, well, at least I won't be sort of a bit late. But it, it was quite funny. And the midnight landing, that was something worth seeing because the trawlers were bumper to bumper to bumper. You could hop all the way down on the pontoon. It was fantastic. So you see, that's something, isn't it? In the past, when I was a lad, all my family, apart from my Uncle Bill, who was on the market doing the fruit and veg, we're all fishermen. I mean, my dad was a fisherman for 32 years. That closed down in 74. And uh, I mean, it, it just wasn't the fishing industry, it was all the factories around it. I mean, the fishing industry, we was known as the food of the north, weren't we? We processed all the food here. And there's factories all over the place. Every nook and cranny, there was a factory. When my uncles used to come in from sea, it, it, it was like Christmas for them sort of thing. And we all lived on fish. I mean, we had meat on a Sunday and we ate fish right through the week. Every, you always got a fry from somebody. You never had to buy it. It always came in when they came in from sea or my dad was a lump, my granddad was a lump, sorry. And it was, it was available. And yeah, I've got lots of good childhood memories. One of them being going out on the tugs to meet my uncle's ship, the Port Vale. When he came in from sea, we met him in the mouth of the Umber and waited for tide to turn. I was only like five. Um, and yeah, it stuck in my mind. And wish them days would come back. But there was a lot of superstitions on good luck and bad luck, like he wasn't supposed to whistle at sea and stuff like that. Um, I mean, my granddad, me, he got lost in 1963, I do believe. Um, I actually come from a, a, a fisherman background and um, all my uncles were deep sea fishermen and um, my grandparents, one of them was a fisherman, never met him actually, unfortunately he, he, he died at sea. But I can remember walking on the quayside with my mum, uh, she was going to collect her mum's wages. Uh, I can remember going on the quayside and waving my uncles in from a bad trip. Uh, also, drastic side of it, one of my uncles was washed overboard and nature as it is, it actually washed him back again, even though he'd actually injured himself. Um, I remember him being airlifted off a trawler when a hook went into his eye. Um, so it has some sort of elements of life that I'm glad I didn't encounter. You had all the Icelanders coming in, using all the pubs. I mean, this was a thriving town, wasn't it? Was Growing up, it was lovely. Um, going to my grandmother's, um, running down the alleys, and um, my grandfather actually was a lumper on the docks, and he used to bring fish from the docks, and uh, he used to say to me, take these down to Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so. So I used to run up and down Willingham Street, taking these parcels of fish and they used to give me half a crown. A lot of the women from the fishing industry became um, net makers and uh, it was known as braiding and a lot of it was done at home so a lot of houses, houses had two hooks uh, with a bar on it and the net started off just as a piece of string, but a long piece of string. And I used to fill the braiding needles uh, for my mother, and she used to actually make nets. And one of the things that we had to do, or wouldn't do, was she would never start a net when a family member was going to sea. 
he sailed on Black Friday, Friday the 13th. Um, him and three other hands, and he disappeared in the North Sea, never found anything. They looked for him for three days and they called it off. And to this day, we don't know what ever happened to him. My uncle Sammy, he died getting off ship. He fell and hit the, the, the dock wall. My uncle Melvin, he, they found him in Esberg dock after 1979 winter. They found him two weeks later, frozen to death, clung to the side of the wall. That was after he was going for his new ship. It slipped and fell into the dock. Well, I think we've seen my dad for three days every month. Because he used to land, get the landing money, two days and then was away again. So I think I've seen my father at a Christmas twice, up to being 16 year old. Oh yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, there's all kind of walks of life coming here. We could buy the sort of house that we couldn't have bought anywhere else in the country apart from Middlesbrough um, and two um, we were we were near the sea we could take the sea the schools were good um, and it was just a, a lovely friendly place to be uh, definitely the community vibe um, you don't get this sort of uh, passion anywhere else I'd say it's a very you know uh, driven community <laughs> to say the least um, uh, you know there's uh, the football team which they really ride or die if I'm to <laughs> and um, yeah uh, great it was for me because say I live down Peaksfield Avenue where the old railway lines and every time one train was coming we could hear it before it got past our front and we every all the kids used to sit on the green and waving at everybody you know, as I was going past, so they were good times. I was a dancer, so I went to a local school called um, Florence Draper, and we did for local festivals at the Memorial Hall. Um, and for me, that was lots of fun memories because there was lots of schools from Grimsby, and it was it was massive. It, it was massive. It wasn't. I don't think there was so much to do apart from because I I dancing as a hobby. I don't think there was as much to do as there is now. For the kids, there seems to be lots more opportunities out there now than there was probably then. And it was a great place. There was lots to do. Everybody seemed to look after you, even though you didn't know them. I mean, I came joined the market in 1980 uh, to work alongside my dad because my uncle had gone into making snooker tables. And um, I've been here ever since. And back then in the 80s, I mean, it was a lot busier. But then we only had two supermarkets in the town. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely buzzing on here. I mean, it's slowly coming back today. But back then it was, you know, it, it was it was absolutely, it was a day out, not a day's work. And uh, yeah, I've seen people with the kids and now the kids have got kids and and I'm getting a feel of my age a bit, I suppose, when I see them and they're all grown up. Uh, my history, as far as the market's concerned, it, I started on Freeman Street Market when I was about, I think about 10, nine or 10. And uh, my parents had a stall on here selling fruit and veg. We used to grow vegetables locally, just up the road. And uh, I used to, it was my job to take the empty boxes to the cardboard crusher in the back and, and then the stall and wait for the next lot of boxes to be ready to take. So that was, uh, that was, my first job on here. Um, I didn't make a career out of that, sadly. I, uh, I went off to do other stuff, but I found myself back here years later. My family is deep-rooted in the East Marsh. Um, right, all oh, right, back to goodness knows when. And the market, before it was covered in, my grandfather used to come on a, a Saturday and a Friday when he had time and work on Molly and Gloria's um, my mum worked in catering, um, silver service catering, and my dad um, was a bus driver, he was an insurance man, and later worked at Salverson's. There was Bears Eye in Grimsby, I worked in the offices of Grimsby on Lady Smith Road, which is now all knocked down. I worked at Salverson's for a little bit, then worked for a few years at, at Bird's Eye. So yeah, it was, it was thriving, and families worked there, family after family generations worked within the, the fishing side of Bird's Eye, yeah. Right about Grimsby, yeah, first of people. I mean, you know, every town's got its problems, but all in all, the people. As, as hard as things can get on this market, we always get, they always turn out. And like I said previously, I've served generations on through my time. My family's been on the market 
from 1926. It's, it's my aunties and uncles and then my dads and now mine. I hope, it, you know, I hope I'm not going to be the end of the line. The people are good, they're very honest, they're very friendly, down to earth, look after each other. Very, very family, I've got a big family. Um, and my mum is one of eight and I have 45 cousins on my mum's side. Um, I would say 40 of them still live in Grimsby. It basically is the people and um, the welcome you get. And um, they are very rough and ready a lot of the time, but um, it, it's quite a sort of generous, um, hail fellow, well met community, really. It is, yeah. Great about Grimsby, I would say communities, the old communities, because you've still got that link, that friendship. Uh, you had the factories, Finders, Birdside, so we all knew each other. Our children went to school together and obviously we're still here, some of us, so we have that friendship that's ongoing and I think that makes a community. I think it's got a good future. I think there's a lot needs to be done. We need um, activities, we need to have a self-esteem boost and be proud of who we are.